Now, before we move on from our sections, it's important to understand the cracked stiffnesses of our sections that we are using in the model. So if you look at AS3600, it pretty much gives you the stiffness of the section as a proportion of the gross stiffness of the section if it wasn't cracked. Um, and for beams and slabs, that's about 40% of your gross section stiffness. For columns, it could be as much as 80% or as little as 30%. And for walls, it could be as much as 40% or as little as 25%. Now, I know that these values are different for American codes. For example, flat slabs are about only 25% and columns are 0.7, which is 70%. Walls is about 35%. So it's somewhere in between and there's a little bit of different approaches between the two codes in terms of these factors. So just be mindful of which code you're designing to, but either way, the process is the same. So let's look at how we can input these stiffnesses into our sections from the beginning. So if you go again to where we define our sections, which is under define section properties, let's start with our column sections, which are frame. That's the column we defined. So let's go to modify property and it's under here that we could actually modify the stiffness of that section. So let's click modif uh, modify modifiers. And it's the torsional constant, the moment of inertia about axis two and moment of inertia about axis three that you will be reducing if you find your column section to crack. Now, how do you know if your column section is going to be cracked? That's a good question. If you look in the Australian code under section 8.5.3, you will find this equation for calculating the effective section of your beams, slabs, and it also applies for columns when you want to calculate the deflections. So your cracking moment is over here. That's the expression for the cracking moment. And basically you can evaluate it on a case to case basis. I've created a spreadsheet that you could use to just input some parameters of your section and your design actions to actually know straight away if it's going to be cracking or no. So let's input uh, for column sections, we've got a width of 450 and a length of 450 and we're using 40 MPA concrete grid. Obviously it's not pre-stressed and let's assume that we're just using the minimum reinforcement of 1% in our column, which means 50% is going to be in the tension side of the column and 50% is going to be in the compression side because our reinforcement is spread throughout the column section. So we'll put 50.5% in tension, 0.5% in compression, and our final design shrinkage is just taken from AS3600. I've just took a quick screenshot of it and put it here just for easier reference. So since we're using a 40 MPA concrete grade, and we're looking at a 450 column, that's about 450 times 10 to the negative six final design shrinkage strain. So we we'll put that one here and we can get what we call a cracking moment for our column. So later on, we're gonna be looking at the column moments under different loads. And if our moment exceed this 39.7 kilonewton meter, that means that this section is going to be cracked. And what happens when it's cracked is that you gotta manually reduced stiffness of your section. By how much? Depending on the compression load that you have on the column. So it could be as much as 80% or as much as 30%. And that's when the second part of the spreadsheet comes in hand when you input how much is your compression load. And based on that, it works out what's your effective stiffness of that column. In this case, it was about 42%. So once you know what is your effective stiffness, if your column cracked, you're going to go and input it in here for the column section as 0.42 and also for the torsional constant. So that basically reduces your stiffness in the weak and strong axis to only 42% of the gross section that is not cracked. Now, I'm not going to define it here because I don't know if my section is going to crack or not. So I'm going to leave that as one and we will revisit this later on when we start looking at our results and analyzing and updating that and rerunning the analysis again. So we'll leave that as one and we'll just make a mental note of how to do that later on. And let's click OK.
Now, another section that we also need to consider in cracking is the slab sections. Slabs, even though they're post-tension, most probably they are going to be cracked in the ultimate load case situation. For that purpose, I always reduce the stiffnesses of the slabs, even without waiting to look at the analysis. The way that we could reduce our stiffnesses in ETABs is through the bending moments M11, M22, and M12. Now that is because our slabs are shell elements which bend like a plate on the weak axis. And in ETABs, based on the sign convention, if you actually want to reduce the stiffness for a slab, you just reduce the M11 and the M22. So let's go ahead and input our 40% from the Australian code, 25% if you're using the American code and that would reduce our bending moments for the plate action just out of plane. Now be careful not to reduce your F11, F22 or F12 because these are the in-plane actions of the slabs which is your diaphragm stiffnesses and in diaphragm you gotta be careful if it actually cracks you could reduce it from here if it doesn't crack don't touch it. Let's click OK, OK Okay, thanks ETABS for reminding me. Let's go ahead and save the work. Now, one last element that we need to look at reducing the stiffness, which is our wall sections. So let's open our wall section. And similarly like slabs, if we go to modify our modifiers for the slab, now if we reduce the M11, M22 and M22, one two we are reducing the out of plane bending of the wall but we know very well that walls don't bend out of plane they actually take forces in plane so to modify that we actually gonna modify the most important one is f12 f12 is according to csi torsional shear component of your in plane forces so if you actually reduce that it reduces your wall capacity to take any more in-plane loads. So it's not a direct M11 and M22 like what we have for out-of-plane. It's actually the shear modifier that we reduce for walls. And that way, it reduces your stiffness for the wall to take um, any more load or to deflect more through in-plane action. So let's say if our walls cracked, and when we looked at our stiffness factors, we found out that we basically only have about 10% compression load on the wall. So it's going to be about 30% of our gross section. So if that happens, you're just going to input a 30% in your F12. And if you modify F11 and F22, they wouldn't make much difference. Give it a try yourself if you want to prove me wrong. But for the cracked wall stiffness, F12 is where we always manipulating the stiffness of the in-plane action for walls. For now, we don't know if our walls are going to be cracking or not, so we should leave that as one, and we'll touch base on that later on when we start looking at the results of the analysis. Let's click OK and save our model, and see you in the next lecture.